Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus. In this tutorial, we are going to create a patchwork with some stitches on an arbitrary mesh. Uh, let's go through the stages first. So we will use a combination of Voronoi pattern and some hard edges, so to speak. Um, next, we are going to bloat these patches to get them padded. And then we are going to apply UV coordinates on each patch. Uh, and the other geometry string will create these um, seams basically and spirals to get the overall effect of, well, uh, stitched patches. So the entire setup is rather small. You can see it here. Um, it's <clears throat> just a stream splitting up with nodes. We don't use any vex here or very little at least. So let's get started. I would like to use a pick ad, so there is a uh, low resolution version. You can see the wires here and I would suggest to smooth it first. So we have, um, well, at least uh, less issues with dense areas and then a subdivision will help with um, providing enough detail. So next we can scatter some points and to make this a bit more procedural, we can give an overall density scale, maybe of five. And then there is the Voronoi fracture that will split it up. You can deactivate interior surfaces beforehand, which will save a bit of computational time. And we just have these uh, patches subdivided. Um, next, we could look into um, applying an attribute on this. We already have a string attribute called piece. I would prefer to have a number that's called piece, which is ranging from 0 to 50 in my case. And we could just delete the string attribute because I haven't found a way to deactivate it right away. So let's remove the primitive attribute name. All right, now, if you want to have a proof, you can also use the explode node to just see it visualized. This is several pieces. And the next step may just be to um, fork off another stream so we can um, displace it. Um, I would prefer to have a group for the um, outer um, boundary points. So you would go to include by edges and say unshared edges. I set the group to points and call it boundary. And the reason we're doing this is we want to measure the distance along geometry. And we use this as start points. So now if you hit enter in the viewport, you should see a nice color transition which is um, indicating the distance away from these boundaries. Of course, they have um, a property that is having these rather sharp uh, corners, so we would blur them in the next step. So let's use the attribute distance and blur it a bit. You can turn this off if you don't need it, but I think it's a good option to have. And then there is a attribute um, <clears throat> node which can be used for remapping. So the attribute remap would take in the distance and we don't need to override its name, but that way you can basically define um, the range and the overall effect. You could also use a ramp if you want a very specific profile but uh, I would suggest to um, simply um, use the soft peak next, which also has some ad additional options for um, displacing geometry based on an attribute. So let's take the modified distance and you can see that we're now in control of this geometry. So everything plays a role. You can define 
thresholds and the overall effect here. I would suggest to leave one uh, normalized, so to speak, between zero and one. So this is really the absolute value. This is maybe a bit more straightforward. And now we can play with the blur. So you can see this is the very sharp effect and now we could blur it down all the way. The amount of blurring you will need has also to do with the overall resolution. So in case you went for a higher subdivision, you will see that the blur takes uh, less of an effect. And also, of course, all this needs more computation time. So I will leave it at three, but you should really experiment with this all the way. Okay. I want this effect to be rather subtle. And we could also think of, um, again, using the ramp. In this case, a B-spline has a very, very soft result as soon as you have a few um, points. Starting from three points, you get this very nice round blend. All right, um, now before we displace it, we could also think about um, texturing the entire um, project. So. <clears throat> Let's just drag down the stream and there is a UV uh, node that does this job. It's, um, you could try flatten and then press spacebar five and you will see these patches. There's also a way to display these um, UV coordinates. So, um, I like the fact that they are rotated in different directions. So uh, this is the pattern we are going to apply is um, a bit more, um, well, flipped around. So this should be interesting. All right, next we um, want to care about the stitches. So a fast way to get there is um, using the divide node first. So we want to get rid of the shared edges. And although this looks a bit uh, problematic in some areas due to uh, overlapping polygons, we could just use the polypath node to turn this into, into curves. Let's activate the primitive numbers and you should look down here into the corner at the total number of primitives. In case you don't see them displayed, you would right click on the info icon and display geometry information always on. Uh, so we only have a very small set of curves and um, this should work nicely with the sweep nodes we are going to use next. But beforehand, we should also have a look at the resolution of these curves. So you see here that um, due to the mesh, we have um, irregular distances between the points. So a resample node um, would sort this out. Let's set the length to 0.02 for these. And we could also, before the polypath, set a fuse node. So that way, um, the overlapping points will be fused together. And now we have a very, very regular um, set of curves. And next, we could use the sweep node. Once you set this to round tube, you get these kind of pipes and um, you can reduce their size depending on the size of your model, of course. And um, I know in advance that we are going to need a higher resolution, but let's just um, run into a slight problem by ignoring that for now and set um, the connection to columns. Now we want to roll these by um, saying per unit distance, I want this amount of rotation. And the problem we're running into is having a bit of a low resolution, which we can uh, change by setting the resample node a bit lower. So this should give us um, stitches. Of course, these are just curves for now. You could render them, but we want to create it on geometry level. So let's use another node another sweep node, which now turns these um, into solid geometry. There are some details to think about, like uh, the ending. Um, for example, these are open and not connected. So you could try a fuse node to bring them together. 
or you could simply try to get away with um, giving them a round ending like so. This uh, topology is not very useful in terms of um, subdivision rendering, so maybe we would just keep it at um, eight columns and use the polyfill to uh, close the holes. The polyfill has an option that um, does a better job when you switch from quadriturals to, I think it was a quadrilateral fan. Just make sure to not deform it and you get these nice four quads. We can simulate the look by using a subdivide node and I think this is a good compromise um, and a proper topology we could use, especially when you zoom out. I think it's um, quite okay. You could also collect the endpoints right here using the group expression node and fuse them, but I didn't find the look too convincing. So let's just keep it the way it is now. And um, I also want to have some UVs applied on this um, stitches in case you have a nice um, shader that does some ripples or any kind of pattern on top. You can do this now. Um, also, just to mention this, there are primitive row and column attributes, as in this case we're using, um, I think, columns before. So, in case you need some variation, you would just activate primitive columns and maybe apply different materials or um, at least colors. All right, let's see how this looks combined. You would um, just use a merge node, like so. And we have these stitches running on top. We can also quickly activate the UVs to, to see both in action. And now you can endlessly play with this. There's just one thing I want to uh, mention. If you have a patch that is running all around, for example, the ears, then you will get um, issues with the texture projection. You can see this is uh, drastically deformed. So um, there are also nodes that create a seam for us, which we could take into consideration. Um, I think it was called auto UV auto seam, which uh, we can have a look at. So this one should um, be able to, um, at a certain threshold, um, draw some lines here. I hit enter to um, visualize this. And once you dialed this in, you could also additionally um, use this splitting first, then do the Voronoi fracturing on top, so you have um, both in effect. I'm not entirely sure whether this is going to work now, but um, let's just bring it in and see what it does. Um, the UVs are split and um, there is also a way to have an um, island attribute. Um, let's just try to integrate this in the entire setup. So at the moment it's not split up, so I create the island attribute. It's a primitive attribute, so we should have a good chance to split it with the primitive split and we refer to the island attribute. Now let's uh, look a bit closer to that and um, apparently this has been cut along the ear which is uh, what we need to um, get the look or to reduce this kind of distortion. There are also other shaders that may prevent this because these edges are not always um, so looking too natural, but I just wanted to show you this additional option. All right, now about the coloring, we um, have um, some ways of um, applying different kind of pieces there. So we could, for example, say I want a random color. Um, here it's a primitive attribute, but we can of course promote it or we could use a connectivity attribute, which is maybe even safer. 
because we have a mixed um, input, so to speak. So there's a class attribute on the patches and there's a color adjust node which will take in um, these attributes. So let's just see we are on points, which is good. And then there is a pattern type called random, which also allows for um, taking in a randomization by attribute. And then we can just enter the class and it should be colored the way we set it up here. Maybe you prefer the twilight pattern and you can randomize it using the seed value. Now on the other stream, we should also bring in at least a simple color node. This could be uh, maybe pure white and that would be the entire setup. Feel free to play with every single element, especially the sweep can change the look of your seams drastically. So when I change the number of twists, you will see it looks quite different. If you change the radii, um, it's also um, quite a different thing. And if you don't like the simplicity of the setup and you would um, prefer an interaction between the stitches and the patches, you could also um, measure the distance from these curves, excuse me, the first sweep towards the patches. All right, if you um, want to have a look, I just added a um, new file to the forum where you can see some um, more complex setup, including uh, interaction between patches and stitches. And there's also loads of other workflows you can examine here. I will post the link in the description and thank you for watching.